Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Part two of the turntable series this week and we are dealing with track number two. I don't think I showed you all the bottle on uh, track number one. But there you go, track number two, fire starter, 46%. Cool little logo. Um, what is the contents of Firestarter? Again, we turn to this nice little booklet. So again, freeze frame if that worked before. There we go. Really unique looking bottles with these things too, and the artwork's quite impressive. I've been looking at these this little booklet for a while now, and they are quite good looking things, these things, aren't they? But yes, so for those of you that for whatever reason didn't pause that, listen to the sultry sounds of my rather ill voice, we have, uh, in descending order, 40% Kalila, uh, which has been maturing virgin oak, sold. 23% uh, Cameron Bridge, also in virgin oak, grain whiskey. 22% Ben Rinnis in chinkapin oak, another turn up for chinkapin. And 15% Invergordon, another grain whiskey, also maturing in virgin oak. Kalila, big, smoky, creamy. Um, is an Isla whiskey, is peated, but I also get a really nice kind of creamy sweetness from Kalila. Ben Rennes, bit of an unusual one. Um, owned and operated by Diageo slash Johnny Walker and is primarily used for blending, much like uh, Noctu was in track one. But uh, Ben Rennes does have a house style bottle. It's a 15 year old, heavily sherried. Um, and he's, he's pretty nice, actually, for like 55, 60 pounds a bottle. The Benrinus 15 is pretty tasty. Uh, here we've got it in Chinkapin, so just American oak. Most of the Benrinus I've tried has been independent bottlings in a combo of like bourbon and sherry and port. The official older Benrinus bottlings of like 23-year-olds and stuff, they get really sulfury, really intense. Um, so Benrinus, not too sure on the house style of that one, despite the fact that they have a bottle of house style, but everything I've tried from them has been radically different. Uh, Cameron Bridge, uh, as most people may know it, Hague Club. Um, I mean, most of what goes into Hague Club is from Cameron Bridge in quite a large majority. And then we also have some stuff from, was it Invergordon? Invergordon. The only grain distillery, oh, well, the only fully just grain whiskey distillery, which is north of the sort of the lowland border. Some malt distilleries do make grain whiskey, I'm aware of that, but Invergordon is the only one which isn't sort of below that highland, lowland line. So we've got quite a lot of peat with this. Ben Rennes versus Kalila. In terms of the balance, Kalila is always going to win. It's just a more dominant style. But you've got a lot of virgin oak and a lot of American oak. So we'll see where this goes. Again, it's a relatively stunning colour. It's nice and light. You're not going to get too, too much of an intense colour. Kalila. Just smells of Kalila. But because the Kalila's been matured in virgin oak, which if that was a regular bottle of whiskey at cash strength, virgin oak Kalila, I would just buy that. So turntable spirits, if you are watching, if you want to bottle virgin oak Kalila at 50% and above, hit me up. I'm interested. I'd definitely buy that. So we're still getting the nice creamy Kalila with the smoke and all that sort of stuff. With the amount of virgin oak running through it, we are getting some really good like creme brulee, creme anglaise, vanilla custard things kicking out through the back of it. And then if you just like the bouquet of the whiskey again, it's kind of got that toffee, creme caramel, the top of creme brulee, you know, the nice kind of crispy bit that we all love. Throwing those a little bit deeper into the glass. And you really pick up some of those bassier, heavier tones of the West Coast and Isla. Overall though, pretty solid now. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, I don't get Ben Rennes anywhere on it. But let's see if that adds in both the texture, the taste, and the finish too.
Okay. Weirdly enough, as much as I love the Prodigy, and love most of the stuff they've ever released, but Firestarter in particular, probably a big launch tune, right? It's the song that made them uber famous around the world. I'm at a bit of a, a contradiction with this whiskey because it's cool that we've been given so much information on it and the breakdown of it. But if you just want a really nicely peated, smoky blend, this is perfect for you. Um, at 46%, with loads and loads of smoky, creamy, spicy Kalila in it. I don't really get the other stuff in there. And I don't think that's turned to it's fault. What they've made is a wonderful whiskey and the, the blueprint of information they've been able to give us with all of that is great. But I think once you put peated whiskey into a blend, and as these are non-age statement products, we can assume it's younger stock, maybe some of it might be teenage, uh, especially with like the grains and the virgin oak. I mean, as I'm talking to you now, I can still taste kind of sweet toffee and caramel and stuff. But as soon as you throw peated whiskey into this, and 40% of this is Kalila, it's kind of going to neutralize a lot of other nuances that other unusual lighter distillates like Ben Rennes may give you. Um, I mean, Ben Rennes up until 2005, I think it was, used to triple distilled whiskey. So if this stuff is older than 2005, which... It could be, I don't know. It could be triple distilled, which is even sort of less likely to be noticed through Kalila. Anyway, that's a slight rant, I suppose, in both a, a good way, it's quite constructive. But this is good, if you like Kalila and you want something in a blend that's just like a little bit more approachable and has got some nice, thick sweetness to it, this is perfect for you. Um, do I prefer track one or two? Track two is obviously more powerful in its approach, but I do love those kind of pineapple sweet notes that uh, track one gave me as well. I think they both get quite equal scores. They do the same, they do different things, but they do it in a very similar manner. Um, track one, I think you can pick up on more of the interesting elements to the whiskey, whereas track two, if you like peat and you just want something a bit different, and certainly in different cast maturations from what you normally find with Kalila, um, and indeed most grain whiskies that are available to buy. This should be quite an interesting purchase for you, but I think overall it gets another seven and a half from me to sit here and smell it as it's filling the room. There's more of those kind of brown sugary notes coming out. But with Ben Rennes, typically, from my own personal experience, from you know, refill, hog, refill hogshead independent bottlings and first fill sherry stuff and cash drink things, it always has these apple-y, sweet, kind of candied orange notes to it. And I don't pull out too much of this on it. I think if you were gonna do more with this, probably putting more Ben Rennes in it would have been quite interesting. Um, just to see if it would have done something a little bit different, maybe eased the Kalila a little bit and brought some more sort of fruitier notes in. But then again, you already have a a track one release which is like designed to be quite fruity and full and maybe that maybe this would have just been good with just Kalila and loads of older grain whiskey that could have been quite interesting um but anyway overall i give that a seven and a half out of ten thank you all for watching and i'll see you all next week cheers